turn in your Bibles then. Matthew chapter 27. Appreciate your prayers. Lord bless. God direct. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. Amen. We're all together. And we come to worship Him, to be in the service, and to hear the Word of God, and to hear it in song, testimony, and the preaching of the Word. And all of it is uh, blessed and orchestrated when we do it according to His will by God. Amen. Let of His Holy Spirit. And so I'm glad that everyone is able to uh, be a part of our service today. Pray the Lord bless you. And that you might be uh, encouraged and strengthened and might be uh, a challenge as well uh, to know uh, that you're in the will of the Lord. Or if you're not in the will of the Lord, I think you might be challenged to get there. Amen. Amen. Uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27. I'm going to start reading verse 24. And appreciate your prayer. <clears throat> when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing but that rather a tool law, a great riot, was made, he took water and washed his hand before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him and took the reed and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put on his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And uh, we'll stop reading. Well, let's see. Let's read a couple more. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear the cross. And when they were coming to the place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it may, might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. They gambled over the good clothes of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we've uh, been able to have a, a great time in Sunday school class and uh, be encouraged in your word and father lord and be challenged as well and i pray father you'll bless your word as we uh, have a time of a singing and testimony now lord god and father this worship god it might be all you'd have it to be lord we are here in the uh a little place of lansing and father i pray even though it is kind of out of the way and obscure god it's still a mighty place when you're in it our Father, and I pray that your Holy Spirit move upon us today. Give us your touch, Father Lord. See the needs, Lord, of your people, those that are hurting and in trouble, Father. We pray, Lord, for those spiritually today whose hearts and lives are not made perfect in your love. Give us your sweet Holy Spirit. God, and direct each thing. Give us an altar service, Father. Touch our heart and our life. Bring it to you today, we pray in Christ's name. We love you for it. Amen. Uh, the king and his family clothing, the things that they would wear. And some of these things that uh, Jesus wore, you might wear, but you don't necessarily need to wear. Uh, but there are some things that he wore that he needed to wear. So the king's, uh, king and his family clothing. Look at verse uh, 28, if you will, with me real quickly. And when they had stripped him, they put on him a scarlet robe. First thing I want to talk about and the idea of the clothing that Jesus had, uh, it's a very important thing that he had. Looked like a lot of people uh, back in his day. It didn't look out of the ordinary. Uh, when you see Jesus and his disciples, they all looked very familiar in the way that they dressed. And yet there were some particulars about what Jesus wore, especially at particular time, special time that made him stand out 
in a crowd. And I guess you could call the time of the crucifixion one of those particular special times when Jesus stuck out in a crowd. Amen? Now, he was a king. Absolutely, he was. Although he didn't dress necessarily as a king, at, at, at any time when he was on the earth as far as him dressing himself, it is close that he didn't have a, a crown made of gold. He didn't have a robe made out of scarlet or purple. He didn't have any fancy sandals on as, as far as that goes, but he did have a, a thing on his head, a covering in his head, a cloth covering, if you will. He had an inner garment. He had the robe that he wore, then he had a cloak for colder weather, and then he had some sandals, rather a, a mundane clothing, if you will, for what he wore. But then the Bible said for things that he had on him, he had a scarlet purple robe. If you look in Mark and John, you find that not only is it called scarlet, it's called purple. And so we read here in Matthew 30, 27, 28, they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Now look up what scarlet robe uh, is. It's scarlet is the color is a deep, bright red. It's a very bright red a color. And then we read that it's also purple. And so the idea there is that there was a gathering of those two together. And don't you just love it? Uh, Reba mentioned about how that God works things out. I love the idea here that Jesus was both king and lamb of God. Amen. And of course, as lamb, he had to shed his blood. And as king, he wore purple. And so the scarlet purple robe uh, that they sing about perfectly fits in who that Jesus was and what he did and what he symbolized. And my friend, the thing that he done for us uh, that are Christian and for those that are lost, he did for you as well, and you need to accept it, is that he wore a scarlet purple robe uh, showing both his humanity as the Lamb of God and as King Jesus Christ today. Amen. Uh, not very few days have before this uh, that Jesus rode on a donkey into the city as a conqueror. And my friend, whether they knew it or not, Jesus was getting ready to conquer not only all of mankind, but death, hell, and the grave. Amen. As an overcomer, uh, that's what Jesus was. Uh, people say, how can you serve a Jesus that died? I say, how can you not serve a Jesus that died for you? Amen. And how can you serve a Jesus that died, but he also rose again? Amen. And who did he rise for? It not for himself. It was for me and you. Amen. And then I love the Jesus that died, that rose again. And then 40 days later, what did he do? He ascended in heaven. Why did he go there? He went back to God. Amen. And he made our peace before the throne uh, with God and our, our hope and our joy is everything that we have in that scarlet purple robe. They took, according to verse 35, his common garments off his carbon raven and laid it aside. Then they put on him a scarlet robe. Now I thought about that for a long time uh, this morning especially. And I thought about what kind of a scarlet purple robe was it? Well, it probably wasn't one of Pilate's uh, garments unless it was one he was getting ready to throw away. And uh, I don't know how many people they mocked and made fun of and did this kind of a thing with. I don't believe that they put any other robe on any other prisoner and pretended that they acknowledged him as a king. But here, for some reason, uh, a purple and uh, is a, a rich man's color. It's a king's color. Only those that had a lot of money uh, because the dye that was made uh, to put in these garments, the purple dye was very hard to get. It was very expensive uh, to get all of it. And uh, they had a snail. Uh, a small animal that was taken out of the sea. It was very small, and a small amount of purple was in that, and they would take that small amount out and take a lot of that out of a lot of different ones, then they'd make purple dye. That's why it was so expensive, and those that wear those fancy robes, Jesus said, dwell in fine houses, palaces, amen? And so a, a purple was a rich man, a king's color, and they would wear it because they were somebody. Amen. And they're mocking Jesus as if he is somebody. Amen. My, 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 did they not know that he was somebody. Amen. 
And he had on the clothing of righteousness and the faith which they could not see when they crucified him. Understand this, friend, today, uh, that one day they're going to stand before Jesus and give an account to their life. The Bible said they will look on him whom they have pierced, amen, are uh, those that have stuck him in the side, those that crucified, those that pulled his beard out and the blood came out, those that spit on him, those that smote him with their hand. One day they'll all stand before Jesus Christ and give an account, but so will we. Amen. We're done no, no more unholy or unrighteous than they were. We're in the same boat. And my friend Rusty Goodman used to sing a song about who crucified the Lord. And then he looked in the mirror and he said, that man that stared back at him, that's the man that crucified Jesus. Doesn't matter how good you are, if you're not saved, you're lost. And if you're lost and undone, you're headed for hell. Jesus died to save everyone. He put it like this, let him whosoever will come. Yes. Amen. He died for all of us today. Makes no difference, amen, what your status in this life is. He died to save you from sin. Doesn't matter how old or young you are, Jesus died to save you from sin. Because he has something better for you than what this world has to offer, amen. I like that, don't you? He's given us a hope I that goes beyond this life. Our hope is a great thing as we live for Jesus. We have him in the Holy Spirit as a possession in our heart and in our life, the, our soul. Uh, Jesus lives inside of us, but he's also saved us for heaven, amen. It's good to live for Jesus while we're here, but my friend, it's good also to have a home when this world is absolutely through with us, amen. And God calls us to go home to be with him. I believe Jesus is going to come back one of these days, don't you? I believe he's going to come back and the church is going to be raptured according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we're going to go to meet the Lord in the air and be with him forever. But we could die just at any moment, in any time. In this world, people are dying in automobile accidents. Uh, they've got the young people that's got cancer. We've got all of these things coming against us today in this world. None of us are promised tomorrow, but we're promised judgment. Yes. It's appointed unto man once to die after this, the judgment according to Hebrew chapter 9. And what are the, we're going to leave this world. Amen. We need to be ready for that time that's coming. But I want you to look a little bit ahead of that verse. In verse 24, Pilate saw that he prevailed nothing, but rather a tumult, a, a, a riot was taking place. He took water and washed his hand before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it for another hand. I clean myself of any guilt. You do what you want to with him. I'm not accountable to his death because I'm turning him over to you. I've asked you, would you have me destroy your king? Would you have me release him? And they said, no, give us Barabbas. Amen. And so Pilate goes through the customary. He calls for a basin of water. He dips his hand in and he goes like that a couple of times. He said, I am innocent. There's no blood on my hand. But it doesn't matter if you washed his hand uh, with dove. It doesn't matter if you washed his hand with dawn. It doesn't matter if you washed his hand with lava. It doesn't matter what he washed his hand with. He was still guilty of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. He was not innocent. He may have thought he was, mm -hmm. but he was not innocent. He was just as guilty as we are to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. How can I say that, even though he said he was innocent? Because Jesus died for Pilate. Amen. Yeah. Amen? Just as he died for me and you, he died for Pilate just as well. Let's read a little bit further here. Then answered all the people, and uh, blood be on us and our children. Boy, they said that right. Then released the Barabbas unto the them. They escorted Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers and the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto the whole band of soldiers. 
a band of soldiers is anywhere between 400 and 600 soldiers. And they gathered all of that band together, I guess as many, they could get into that common hall. And that common hall has a very large ceiling and it is a very wide building and it's got a stone floor in it. And there's just a, a lot of room for a lot of people to get in there. And they gathered them in there. So Jesus is being crucified or being uh, held in some kind of a mock trial. And then he goes out to the common area of where there are and he's not alone. There's people everywhere. They strip his robe off of him, put on him a, 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 a purple robe, and then they start to mock him and make him as king. A very large order of things that was going on. Of the inner garment, what they had, took the robe off. He's got his inner garment on. They put this scarlet robe on him, and, and then he's uh, made mockery of, in front of them. And so Jesus wore a robe. You may not need to wear that robe, but you could, very well could wear that robe. And what does that robe represent? One of the king's children, if it's us today, amen. And we're not necessarily going to uh, go, all of us, by the way, of the cross, but some are. We may not all be stoned, but some are. Uh, a lot of people are, that are Christians are being beheaded. A lot of them are being put in prison. We may not wear the scarlet robe, but we may wear something or go through something very similar to, to what they did because we're the king child. And now someone might think, well, this is not a good uh, message uh, to encourage people to get right with God. If you read the rest of the story, you'll realize where I'm going. Amen? Uh, yeah, it is a good thing because if you, you're not going to keep this world anyway. Um, somebody can come into your home and steal everything you've got. And you're not promised that you're going to keep the things that you got. And another thing is when you die, you're leaving it all anyway. Amen. The only thing you got is what Jesus gave you. That's the only thing's eternal. Amen. Look at the rest of it. And he said, they released them and Barabbas and cruci to crucify soldiers in common hall, gathered the whole band about him. They stripped him, put on him a scarlet robe. Then the next thing that Jesus wore, when they platted a crown of thorns, put it on his head. And my friend, you need to see those thorns. Uh, you, uh, you, uh, I'm going to try to bring one of those thorns back and when we come back from Israel this next time. Uh, those thorns were a couple of inches long. They planted a crown of thorns. I don't know how many times they took that branch and circled that branch and made a crown out of it. Uh, but there were thorns. You see the pictures sticking up and sticking out, sticking down, and yes, they were sticking inside. And they took that plaited crown of thorns, mocking him as a king, and they put it upon his head. A little bit later on, you read where they took the reed that was in his hand and they smote him on the head, pushing those thorns a deep red. How many has ever got a thorn in their hand? Ever got a thorn in their foot or in their arm? I'm here to tell you that don't feel good. Amen. And to have it on your head and it fresh and it pounding that thing upon your head, the thing that they gave Jesus that he wore that you and I may not necessarily have to wear, but we might, is to be mocked and made fun of for the purpose of Jesus Christ. If you're saved, well, if you're not saved, you'll escape that, but you won't escape the judgment to come. Amen. You, you could wear that, but you might possibly not wear that crown of thorns. But you really need to see what the, the thickness and that, that crown of thorns that they put upon his head and get an idea of exactly what Jesus uh, suffered for me and you. Now, remember in the Old Testament, uh, whenever that they anointed the high priest uh, and they put him all of his clothing on him, uh, the royal clothing that he had, priestly garments that he had, they also put a head, a uh, crown upon him, uh, and it had holiness to the Lord. Remember the high priest, holiness to the Lord? They put a crown of thorns on Jesus. Now they were getting ready to crucify him on a Mount Moriah, the place where that Abraham took Isaac. And Isaac said to his father, Father, we've got the wood and we've got the fire, but where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, Son, God shall provide himself a sacrifice. And as Abraham raised his uh, uh, arm with his knife ready to kill his son, Isaac, which he had laid on the altar made out of wood that he had built when he raised his hand, God called out to him and he said, Do thy son no harm. Abraham looked up and there was a ram by his horns caught in a thorn bush. God provided. Amen. Jesus provided by that crown of thorns. 
And you really need to see those. <coughs> they stripped him, put on him a scarlet robe, put a crown of thorns upon his head, and a reed in his right hand. No matter how big that reed was, they got all sorts of different reeds. We got all sorts of reeds around us here, but evidently <coughs> big enough to look like a king's scepter. Amen, because that was the mockery part of it. Big enough to look like some kind of a scepter that a king would wear, heavy enough for them to take it later on and to smack him on the head and drive those thorns further in. But then not only did they do that, then they got down on one knee, knee and they probably bowed their head. And I just played this over in my mind as I studied about this. Uh, they probably said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they acknowledge him in a mockery. Have you ever seen people pretend to mock somebody and they go through it like it's a real serious thing, real serious testimony or what they're and trying to acknowledge? And when they did that to Jesus, my friend, it was total and complete mockery. Here's what Jesus went through for me and you. Uh, they pulled his beard out. They spit on him. They smacked him. They blindfolded him and said, prophesy, who was it that smoked thee? Amen. All of these things they did to Jesus because he was a king. A real king. A king of the highest order unlike any other king. In fact, all other kings are a mockery of who Jesus Christ was and is today. Amen. And think about uh, all of that. It really makes me uh, uh, humble in my heart to what he went through. Uh, they smote upon him, spit on him. Verse 30, 31, they mocked him, took the robe off him and put on his own garment on him and led him away to crucify him. They put on Jesus his own garment. What kind of a garment was that today, friend, uh, that they put on Jesus? His, his uh, uh, second layer of clothing, his inner garment, kind of like a t-shirt and then this robe uh, that he had on. And that, that was a common garment. And I'm reminded of the woman uh, that came to Jesus having been sick with an issue of blood for years and went to all the doctors and spent her money, but rather grew worse in the Bible we're told what the scripture said. And then she said, if I can but touch the hem of his own clothes, the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be made whole. Now she pushed herself through a different crowd and she finally got up close enough where she could reach out and touch the hem of the garment. She had faith to believe that if she could get that close, she would be healed of her infirmity. And my friend, if she only understood that she could have went to Toledo, Ohio, amen, and got the same healing because it's not the distance that gives you faith to believe. It's the faith that you've got that you believe in. He can move upon your need regardless what your need is and how far away he is. Amen. Now people say when you're praying at the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, that it's a short prayer. Amen. It gets there quicker. It's not long distance. If you call on Jesus from Lansing, Tennessee, it's long distance. Amen. I've got news for you. He is everywhere. He's just right there. He's as close as you want him to be. problem is people don't want him too close. Their sin makes, makes them uncomfortable around Jesus. What made Adam and Eve uncomfortable? Their sin. Amen. And they tried to run and get as far away from God as they could. Amen. David said whenever they had sin, he tried to acknowledge himself. I'll go into the sky. I'll go into the ocean. I'll hide myself somewhere. But no matter where you go, God's there. He's going to search you out. Amen. They did all this, the thing that they did, the king's clothing that they had. I right, look at the next part of it, verse uh, 30 and uh, or, uh, verse 33. And then they came unto a place called Golgotha, which said place of the skull. They gave him vinegar to drink, and he wouldn't drink that vinegar. Verse 35, they crucified him and parted his garments among, uh, parted his garments, all of them. Uh, his outer cloak, if he had it with him, his regular uh, uh, white fashioned robe that he had on uh, at that particular time, probably his inner garment. Uh, the Bible talks about Jesus being naked and mocked and made fun of during that time, so probably everything that he had and his garments casting lots 
And then the idea there is the Bible said uh, that the Roman soldiers gambled. They cast lots to see who would get his uh, robe uh, because it was seamless. It didn't have a seam. It was sewn out of one piece of cloth and it was not uh, seen together. It was a kind of a, a unique uh, item that they had and they all wanted it. So they gambled to see which one would get the robe of Jesus Christ. The robe, I'm going to say it like this, the robe of righteousness. I'll tell you, friend, you don't have to gamble to get it. All you have to do is be saved. You're gambling if you don't get it. Right. His sandals. Doesn't mention anything about his sandals here. But the Bible tells the Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 15, I believe it is. But to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know what his sandals were, right? Just kind of common everyday poor man sandals, nothing Gucci or whatever about them. They had regular, regular old sandals that he had on. And they were dirty. They were filled with blood. Amen. They had the blood uh, that Jesus had been shaved from the cat of nine tails that whipped his back, from the crown of thorns that was on his head. His sandals were blood filled. And my friend, they say something along this line. I don't criticize somebody until you walk in his shoes. Don't mock my Savior until you walk in his sandals. Do you understand what he went through for you and I today? He paid a great price. An awesome price to save us from sin. Therefore, I tell you, don't wallow in sin. Don't play in sin. I don't think that it's okay to have sin because Jesus died to save you from your sin. I'm going to close with this. But there are some things that you do need as a child of God. And 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4 that tells us a little bit about it. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Amen. You need that crown which glorified Jesus Christ. I believe that there are five different crowns. This crown of glory is one of them. And you know what we're going to do with those crowns when we stand before Jesus Christ? We're going to take them crowns off and we're going to cast them at His feet by acknowledging we don't deserve anything. Amen. He makes us worthy. He makes us deserving. But my friend, when you think about all He went through, brothers and sisters, <laughs> We don't deserve any crowns, amen? If it hadn't been for Jesus, He's the one that done it all, amen? All amen. we can is acknowledge Him and follow Him. And then He said, whatever you go through, I'll go right there with it. With it, I'll go with you through it, amen? That's what He tells us. So that crown of glory, we need 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19. For what is our hope, Paul said, or joy or crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming. Uh, so Paul is telling the Thessalonian people, my crown is you when you get to heaven and stand before Jesus Christ. Paul is saying that I'm really going to appreciate the crown of rejoicing when you, because of my ministry, I have a privilege to stand with you with all the rest of the saved, the redeemed, when we stand before Jesus Christ, Paul's saying that that's a pretty high honor today. I can't think of a greater thing myself, amen, and I to be with all the people that I've known and had a part in their ministry, whether they were saved under my preaching or singing or a part of my life and my family and whatever, when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing. Paul saying, my crown of rejoicing is when we all gather there around the throne of God. We need that crown today, friend. Also in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20, he said, uh, or verse 10 rather, fear none of those things which shall come. Rather, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and that you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. How far? Unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. 
Amen. We need that crown of life that only Jesus Christ can give. I can't give it to you. Uh, the Pope in Rome can't give it to you. Uh, the high Orthodox Russian uh, Orthodox preacher in uh, Russia can't give it to you. The Greek Orthodox preacher uh, that stands as the position of Pope, he can't give it to you. Your mommy and your daddy can't give it to you. Jesus Christ gives them. Yes. Amen. It's a crown of life which faded not away. Amen. And then Revelation chapter 7. We'll close with these verses. Verse 9, Revelation 7 and 9. And after this I beheld the Lord a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Remember I mentioned that a little while ago. And all the angels stood about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. What do you need that last day when you stand before Jesus Christ? You need that robe of righteousness. It's symbolic of Him giving you His life and taking away your sinful life. That's the exchange. Whenever that they sacrificed the lamb on the day of atonement for the nation, the high priest first had to offer for himself, and then he offered for the people. And what he'd do is he would get a lamb, he would look it over, make sure that it was perfect, that it had no blemishes and no uh, flaws in it, that it wasn't partially lame, and it didn't have any of its wool kind of jerked out or anything like that. It was a perfect looking lamb. He would look it over, and then he would sacrifice that lamb for himself. Then he'd do the same thing for the people. He would provide them a perfect sacrifice that had no blemish, had no, uh, no error in it at all. Jesus is our perfect sacrifice. He is the only one that can wash us from our sin. Isaiah said it like this, though your sins be as scarlet, which is a bright red, they shall be as wool. Amen. So your sin be as, uh, we get the first week up. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as wool. They'll be red like crimson. Amen. They shall be as uh, white. The idea there is there's an exchange that Jesus Christ is making your sinfulness and your, your, your stained clothing he gives you right. How can something red be made white by the blood of Jesus Christ? Would you stand?